welcome. This is uh, a, a sort of a new venture for what we're going to be doing within the course. Uh, this is, by the way, uh, AEDT 1120, um, Digital Teaching and Learning Technologies. Um, and what we're going to be doing in this particular uh, set of segments is taking a look at uh, discussing the implications of uh, new mobile devices and uh, the changes that mobile devices are bringing and have brought already to uh, not only educational institutions and education contexts, but also to corporations, to society as a whole, et cetera. And I have with me uh, Jeff Brown, who is a colleague, uh, former student in the grad program here at UIT, and I'm going to give him um, a couple of seconds to introduce himself in terms of uh, his background, his experiences, and then we'll get down to the heart of the matter in terms of discussing uh, the questions that have been uh, prepared ahead of time. So Jeff, take it away, please. Thank you. Um, well, I guess uh, right now I'm presently a, a classroom teacher at um, Cobra Yeast. Um, I decided to come back here after five and a half years as a technology consultant at the board office. I had learned an awful lot of things, especially around e-learning um, and uh, various technology pieces in the classroom, and I thought it might be interesting to try to walk the walk rather than just talking the talk. So I came back uh, from the board office, and I've been working here ever since, and I've been working strongly with the students with trying to provide access to, uh, to technology for them for the, the work that they do, and, and it's very well received. Um, I'm especially trying right now to add as much mobile device work into my classroom as possible. All of our kids walk in with iPods and, and cell phones and so on in their uh, backpacks and their pockets, and they're told rapidly to turn them off and to not at all capitalize on those things. Um, and they get pretty surprised when they walk in. I say, uh, please turn them on, put them on the desk, and, and we're going to use those throughout our course. And so I've been trying a lot of that work um, and uh, trying to do problem-based work as much as I can and constructivist kind of approach to education. So it's very exciting right now for me. Can you talk a little bit about uh, your project work and, and uh, the report that you put together uh, that was the basis for your MET? Oh, okay. Um, at the um, university, I worked uh, with Francois Desjardins and uh, Colin Jago, who uh, was another master's student at the time. And uh, the work that we did was trying to be able to measure or put together an understanding of teachers and their competencies with the use of technology. Um, and my portion specifically was around adoption. You know, what kind of things caused teacher obstacles to adoption? and what kind of things could we possibly do to measure where they were on that uh, Rogers adoption curve, you know, the, the uh, whole piece of, of uh, Rogers' work uh, that, that I w was the center of my, my actual event, um, where they sat on that adoption curve and in, in hopes of eventually being able to marry up professional development that was appropriate to where those individuals were on the curve. What did the history of computing have to do with all of that? Well, I wanted to take a really solid look at uh, kind of what we'd come through. And uh, we went and, and broke down kind of, and it, it kind of happened naturally, strangely enough. Um, we broke down uh, kind of the history of computing in education from basically its first arrival in the late 1970s, early, or excuse me, very, very late 1970s, early 80s, through to where we are today. And we took a look at uh, kind of what was possible based on the, on the actual technology itself. Um, you know, because there's been quite a bit of evolution in technology. Um, and again, Moore's Law, that we talked about last week, shows how that affected us in technology. We added some um, more technology, more and more and more, to schools. There was an awful lot of it. A strong attempt um, was, was kind of how I worded it, um, to meet some perceived need of change in, in our society, that, that we were becoming a more technological society, and schools had to catch up to that. Um, and we went through um, kind of a stage where we went from mainframes available um, and school board wide to some to mini computers, you know, that were uh, you know like able to handle certain areas of, a, of maybe a school or whatever, and then down to desktops, where we started to see then kind of proliferation of, of desktops that became cheaper. They started to come out and, and be available for students to use. We looked at what most uses were and how teachers were interacting with them at that time, and it was pretty much very hit and miss. Um, as far as what teachers would, would offer, you get a really intensely um, technologically driven teacher um, and he would or she would try to use them wherever they possibly could, but they weren't really very curriculum oriented at that point. They were left out of the curriculum uh, in most cases and, and the teachers developed almost the curriculum by themselves. And then in this attempt to get the uh, 
the computer, the technology uh, available, they started to then infuse it into the curriculum and, and see a change. You know, all the existing curriculum had a technology piece put into it, but it was almost laid over top of um, what people were already doing. So it didn't really make much change. And then obviously we've seen a, a rapid adjustment in schools to with desktops becoming so cheap. We've gone to to ratios um, of a number of computers that should be available to students and and those kind of things. And and we seem to have reached um, a stage where now we're bringing um, an awful lot of wireless into schools. All of the schools in our on our um, board are all been made wireless, which opens another whole possibility, right? That whole um, possibility of of uh, using mobile devices, but they're all the way along, there's been a continu continuous kind of restriction to the adoption by teachers throughout the whole history of it. Every time there's a change, everybody seems to want to, um, what little bit of understanding I could get on it was they wanted to, to stay with what they already had. So they, they always thought that you had to be able to do these things back five years before you could move into what presently is now. Um, so they always were always... And they still hadn't got up to that point yet. So we ended up with, with a whole lot of issues as it, it just, the actual inertia in the system kept the adoption from happening. Um, and uh, here we are now, at the conversation we had last week, um, the idea that, uh, you know, adding something into the classroom uh, was, was still controversial. The idea of using a cell phone in the classroom um, is, uh, to the majority of, of teachers, um, really taboo. That these things are actually a problematic issue, problematic for for the actual classroom environment, because it keeps us doing business uh, from doing business as we used to, and we're still not ready to shift into doing business as possibly we should. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Just uh, thinking back to some of the conversations that we had in the tutorial sessions um, a while back, the whole idea of um, even moving to the adoption of a calculator still seems to be somewhat controversial. Uh, and just think about the conversations that we actually had um, in, in the tutorial sessions themselves. All right, over the past couple of weeks, we've been taking a look at what the uh, primary stages were from moving to from uh, mainframes to personal computers. This week, we're specifically looking at mobile devices and the kinds of effects that mobile devices have had. I would like you to think uh, about the underlying kind of question to all of these um, discussions that we're going to be having over the next uh, 15 minutes or so about um, the set of implications of the application of mobile devices and the concepts that come along with them to teaching and learning context and environments. So you've got to think about those kinds of pieces as we're going along. So that was directed to our, our listeners, uh, Jeff. So let's start in on, on the questions themselves and see where this gets us. Um, we're going to have a bit of a discussion as we go through this, so it'll take on less of, I hope, less of a uh, an interview kind of setting and more of a discussion backwards and forwards uh, as we're going through. So do you want to tackle the first set of questions there? What is the role of the OS in mobile devices? Why has this role been adopted in mobile devices? So that, why do we have the OS taking on that kind of a role within mobile devices? And how does this differ from the historical role of an OS, an operating system, in personal computers? Uh, to me right now, it seems it's almost like a, an interface, obviously, which is what it's designed to be. But it's to allow, I think, for the design of, of applications by a myriad of people who might see a need that somebody else might not. And then they can simply go ahead and build an app and plug it in and have it operate in an OS without any issues at all. It'll help then. And those people are usually outside of the actual company that are cre creating the OS. So what happens is it, it's kind of an added advantage to both ends, corporately speaking. Um, uh, if the people go ahead and, uh, let's say, a, an average gentleman or lady just goes ahead and, and builds an application that rides quite well on, on the Apple OS, um, Apple then can say, okay, we can do these wonderful things with our, with our equipment. Um, you know, you have access to 250,000 apps, probably which very few they've actually created themselves. So it actually is an added value piece for their, for their piece of, of uh, product, right? So pe more people will make use of it on that kind of marketing side. But more, more importantly, it allows for that device to 
be used with anything that a corporation or an organization might deem necessary for, for a more efficient flow of business. So it makes it a, a very much kind of a, almost a, 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 an author space um, that allows for any training to take place. So if an, if an organization wants to add some training or wants to make use of, uh, of an application that specifically suits them, they can have, they can have uh, work it on any one of their mobile devices which then allows their individuals to move around as needed for whatever job they want to do. So it's, it's a, a kind of a major advantage in that things can just ride on top of it um, that can suit any kind of need that a person might have.